what age should my daughter start lifting weights? Great question, Bob. Uh, I would say it depends on a couple of factors. One, what type of sport is is your daughter playing? So is she playing a highly competitive sport where she is wanting to play at the highest level? Then starting to drip feed in some weight training can be helpful if her schedule allows for it. I know a lot of uh, young athletes have got a pretty demanding schedule with their school commitments, club sports, school sport, as well as all the academic demands as well. So taking into account her schedule, you might start with one to two times a week. And from an age point of view, it just depends on one, again, their schedule, her appetite to lifting weights. So if it's a real deterrent and she's she's not valuing the sessions at all, then be mindful of that because you don't want to burn her out. So that would be another factor. But if if schedule has some openings and she has some energy for it and there's an appetite to start weight training, then you can start at any age. If she's competing in sport, the demands and physical stress on the body uh, of competitive sport is always going to be far greater than what you can do in the gym. We just want to make sure that you pair up with a good coach that can teach her technique. Next question is from Charlotte. I want to improve my jumping. What are the best exercises? Great question, Charlotte. So best exercises, anything that's going to improve your max force production, so trap bar deadlift, RDLs, box squats. Uh, so we want to work on lifting heavy early in the week. Like I mentioned earlier with Bob, making sure that you've got sound movement mechanics first. So if you're moving efficiently, then we want to add load progressively uh, within your program. Even if you're in season, you, you should be lifting heavy early in the week, working on your max strength. And that's your ceiling for your power production. So although you're not moving fast, it will have a um, transfer to your power production. So lifting heavy is really, really important uh, for jumping. And we want to lift heavy with knee dominant movements. So think of squat and also hip dominant movements. So think like a deadlift. And then from there, we want to make sure that you're doing some power-based, velocity-based movements in the gym. So simple as squat jumps, both double leg, single leg, we want to moving straight up vertically, so t- head towards the ceiling and then horizontally as well, so jumping as far out in front of you as you can. Paul has written, how long should my gym sessions take in season? Uh, typically in season, I'll program for sets in off-season, pre-season and season. And a lower body session, our main one of the week would be anywhere between 15 and 20 sets for a high week. Maybe you've got an eight-day turnaround, you do 20 sets. And then for a six-day, you only do 15 if you're working lower body sets. How long that take, I wouldn't put a time on it, to be honest. So if you're feeling fatigued, give yourself a longer rest so you can still get good intensity, so you're resting longer, uh, and therefore it stretches the session out. But on average, if I had to give you an estimate, I'd say anywhere between 45 minutes would probably be a typical lower body session. If you're productive in the gym and you've got a structure and you're following, that would be probably your standard. And then the, the second lower body session of the week, which is a total body session at the moment on our program, that would be around... 10 to sort of 15 lower body sets in the week and that's that would take because there's upper body movements in there and trunk movements in there as well around that sort of 35 to 45 minutes all right let's get into this week's power tip on how to train like an afl speed forward and defender so firstly some key performance indicators from a physical point of view for speed forwards and defenders we have clearly speed is important so when we're talking about speed we're talking about in short distances so hard accelerations going from a a static or on the jog pace to a a really high speed pace. So maybe 80% of your max speed in a short distance. Your agility, so ability to react to an opponent for a defensive pressure act or your ability to cut and evade an opponent when you've got the ball. And then repeat speed, so repeat high intensity efforts that are a little bit longer in duration. So thinking like 40 metre, 60 metre, 80 metre efforts. In terms of what moves your needle for uh, improving these qualities, your body composition is massive. So you want to make sure that you've got uh, good skin folds. Uh, You're not carrying too much muscle, you're not carrying too much fat. So get assessed by a dietitian at your club to see where you sit. Secondly, assuming you have a well-designed gym program, we want to really target your lower body strength and power. So some of it might be the box squat, some of it might be the trap bar deadlift, uh, but we want to make sure we've got one of those that we're doing. Then from there, some plyometrics, either before your field training or after your field training, within your field training, however you, you can fit it into your program where you're jumping for height and you're jumping for distance, both single leg, double leg, and lateral movement. And then pairing this in with your ability to cut off one step. So that ability to, you're moving at speeds 
in a straight line and then rather than shuffling your feet, which takes more time and then changing direction, you're able to just stop on a dime and, and cut and change your, your lane that you're moving. So your ability to be able to do this from an offensive point of view is critical. So making sure that you're you're working on that, whether you, you're doing a drill where you're just running tent for a five meter cone in front of you and then you're cutting off that cone on the inside of the cone. Make sure our foot's not going outside of the cone 